Question 15. Here are two spinners A and B. Each one is a regular hexagon. For each statement, put a tick if it is true, put a cross if it is not true. The first thing you should notice is that spinner A has got six sections, all equal. And spinner B has only got three sections, all equal. Now, it's going to be very difficult to compare if they've got different amounts of sections. It is possible, but what we could do to make it easier is to split each of these three sections in half, like this, so that we've actually got six sections. Now, that will make it the spinner B very, very similar to spinner A, and it should make it easier to compare. So, first statement, scoring a 1 is more likely on A than on B. Well, if you look at spinner A, there is 1, 2, 3 ones out of a possible 6. So that's 3 out of 6 for spinner A. For spinner B, this one here spans across both of these sections. So that's 2 sections out of a possible 6. So, is it more likely on spinner A than on B? Well, yes it is, because 3 out of 6 is more likely than 2 out of 6. So, that first statement we need to tick. Second statement. Let's get a different colour. Second statement says this. Scoring a 2 is more likely on A than on B. Well, how many 2s are there on A? Well, there is 1 there. And there's one there. So that makes two out of six. And on B, there's a two here. But don't forget this two spans across two sections. So that is also two out of six. So they're both two out of six. Now, if they're both two out of six, it can't be more likely on A than B. They're actually equally as likely. So that statement is incorrect because they're equally as likely. It's two out of six on both spinners. The final statement says scoring a three is equally as likely on A as on B. Well, if we're looking at just the threes, on statement A there is one three. So that's one out of six. On statement B, there is only one three there, but remember it spans across two of the six sections. One, two. That three spans across both of those sections. So that is two out of the six sections. So spinner A was one out of six, spinner B was two out of six. Now the statement says it's equally as likely. Well, if they've got different fractions, different probabilities, different chances, then they can't be equally as likely. So that statement is also false. Now let's get a different colour and scroll down and look at the second question. The second part of the question says this. Zara spins both spinners. The score on A is added to the score on B. She says the sum which is a posh word for total. So the total of the scores on both spinners is certain to be less than 7. Is she correct? Yes or no? Now we're not going to get the marks if all we do is circle one of these two and just guess without an explanation. We've got to give an explanation. So she's saying it's certain to be less than 7. Well, the easiest way of explaining this is that let look at what happens if she gets the top score on both spinners. The top score on spinner A is a 3. The top score on spinner B is also a 3. So if she gets the top score on both spinners, the highest possible total she can get would be 6, because 3 plus 3 equals 6. So if the highest possible total is a 6, she is certain to get a total less than 7 because she can't get any higher than 6. So is the sum of the scores certain to be less than 7? Yes, it is. Now we need to explain it. And we say if she gets the 
heist on both spinners. This is 3 plus 3 equals 6. So the biggest total is 6. This means she is certain to get less than 7. And that's all you need to write to explain it.